The Sheikh is a guest of the Almighty. He wants to show him the history. So we are. He's the. What do they call them? Tour guide. Tour guide. Okay. Tour guide. It's a special way for that. Yes, museum educator. Ah, museum educator. Thank you. Can we put this on? Put it so they can record it. Right. Don't stay too far away from the camera. No, it's it's also here. I want to point out our national coat of arms. Yeah. That's our national coat of arms. Leave them and just. Yes, true. If you justice. speak aloud, so can I? I just wanted to point out this one. Um, about how many mi hour, minutes or hours do you have? Oh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes for you. All right. Ah, no, no. Ah, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yes, guide. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank You're welcome. Thank you. Very good. So this is a Kekos Castle that uh, has attracted so many people around the world to come and have a look at and to listen to the history of Ghana and Kekos. Um, it was started by the Swedish in around 1654. And initially it was built with timber. But the year after, they replaced it with stones and mud. And they called it Fort Karolosberg. It was named after King Charles X of Sweden. Yes. And it's changed hands several times between the Swedish, the Danes, the Dutch, and finally the English. Captured it in 1664 and developed it into this edifice as we have today. And it was used mainly as a trading post, trading in gold, ivory, spices, and slaves. Also some guns, gunpowder, secondhand clothes, blankets, and many things were brought from Europe, which were used in the exchange for the local African products. And much later in years, it served as a point where certain European ideas were introduced. Talking of Christianity, formal education, and some state institutions developed from this castle. So this castle has functioned in diverse ways, both positive and negative, in the social, economic, and political development of this country. And in the course of the tour, I will be discussing some of these issues with you. But the main focus of our discussion will be on the transatlantic slave trade, which made this castle very famous, and for which reason UNESCO has designated it as a World Heritage Site. When it was designated? 1992, yes. For the role it played in the transatlantic slave trade, and also in laying the foundations of the present-day international trading systems of the world. It's big, it's huge. Yes. <laughs> So to this edifice, you are warmly welcome. Very good. May we... Hey, Isaac. Call here, call here, Mr. 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 Photographer, no more. And after, photographer, no more. Two pictures and three pictures, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Right. So this dungeon was constructed around 1792 and it was designed for a thousand people. But as the trade went on, it was taking about 1,500 people and even more. 
right? We will go in and see how they survived in the dungeons. It's about three steps to the last floor, which is slopey. It's not slippery, but it's more advisable to walk on the left. So. <laughs> The right is better than the left. It's better to come to the right. He's on the right already? All right. Okay. This one? Uh -huh. So please cross, cross, cross to the wall here. Cross to the wall. Please come to this way. Come this way. Uh -huh. And then let's go down briefly. Be careful. The left is slippery. The left is slippery. Okay, let's stay. Let's stay here. I'll make a presentation here briefly for you. Excuse me. All right. So I will I will briefly put up the lights. You see? This was the condition in the dungeon. There were no lights. So the whole lot there provided them with lights and ventilation. Maybe a deep enough, so I'm a matter. And they stayed here for about three months on the average. And whilst they were here, they urinated, they defecated, they vomited, they ate, and they slept here. Mm -hmm. see. Occasionally, they were let out to be fed and also to crack stones with cannonballs that were used in building the castle. Yeah. Right. And from the top there, a soldier supervised them. Sometimes when the captives were in angry mood, food was thrown in from there. So they struggled for it here in their feces. Water came in as well. They cupped their hands to drink or suck each other's hair for water. Yeah. Yes. Now there's another small hole up there. Very small one. Great. Under this pillar. Here. You see it? Very good. Now that was used by the domestic slaves. These were those who were sick, those who were weak, those who were maimed and not strong enough to survive in the dungeons. They were used as servants in the castle. Mm -hmm. They fetch firewood, fetch the water, wash the clothes of the officials, and did all the odd jobs. But some hid in there and listened to the conversations in the dungeon to know if there were plots of escapes, if there were plots of rebellions or revolts. And those who were implicated were kept separately here. Very good. Serve as a dungeon for the troublemakers. Those, those whom we may refer to as the freedom fighters. This room can take about 200 people. But they were chained here to the walls. I see the holes on the wall. They were chained to it. See. And the channel on the floor runs through the middle of the dungeon to the exit. Served as a drainage for their feces and urine. So when it rains, depending on the direction of the wind, water came in through these holes to wash the floor. See, but the whole place got covered with filth, and many of them got sick and died here. Right. An excavation here revealed bones, shackles, branding instruments, and some ropes. Some parts of the earth were tested. It contained blood, flesh, feces, and many of such. Right. Just behind you here, it's a portion of the coverings on the floor. See, this piece is made up of human excrement, blood, decomposed bodies, clothes that were left here, compacted over years. See. And that is what you have been working on since we entered the dungeon. That's what you have been working on. It's often said that walls have years, they don't have mouth. Otherwise, these walls would have told us what happened here. There have been witnesses to these inhuman treatments for years. And, uh, so this goes all the way down? All the way through the rest of the dungeon to the exit.
Enter religious sites, so I announce our presence. Now, everybody. All right, what we are standing before now is a shrine. We believe in worshiping supreme being through natural phenomenon. So certain trees, certain rivers, mountains, and some stones are believed to have spirits behind them. And through these spirits, we communicate with the supreme being who was considered too pious to be approached directly by us sinful men. See? That's why in a traditional setup, one cannot approach an elderly person or a chief directly. You have to go through a linguist. So these gods served as linguists between man and God. There are many of them in Cape Coast alone. There are about 77 official gods. This is one of them. Call him Nana Tabir. He was here before they started constructing this castle. Okay. Yes. But through persuasions and force, the people were prevented from coming here to worship. So they performed rituals and removed the spirits from here to the center of the town until 1973, when rituals were again performed and he was brought back. That's why we find a shrine here in the middle Do you of a dungeon. See him no, it's a spirit. Oh. It's a spirit. But rituals are performed here. Uh, not, they, no, uh, normally, rituals are performed here almost every day. Yeah. yeah, I ask because in the north, some such gods are seen like crocodiles. Like yes, the, 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 these crocodiles are seen to be the physical representation of the gods oh, okay. that are spiritual. The, 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 the gods are spiritual, but they, they are believed to be residing or through these uh, elements, we can see them and then interact with them. In the same north, there are some, some people also eat crocodiles. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, not, you are not eating the gods. <laughs> no. <laughs> renovation? Yeah. We have been, they have been preservation, yeah. not yeah. renovation. Yes, sir, preservation. They have been preservation. That's why this building is still standing. We continue okay. to preserve it every year. Okay. All right. So this part of the dungeon was used as a sorting room where they sorted out the captives. It was a dungeon as well. But when the captives were ready to leave and their ships arrived, they sorted the captives here to know which belongs to who. Right? And behind this wall, there was a tunnel through which the captives were led to the exit. They were branded. Right? They were branded, yes. They were branded in the palaver hall. But mm. they were branded to identify. That's why they were able to sort them out to know which belongs to who. Mm. So they were led through the tunnel to the exit. Right. Door of no return. To the door of no return. We will go through it, see how they were taken into their ships. But when the trade was abolished, the authorities realized that there were some merchants and officials who were secretly shipping captives through the dungeons. So the tunnel was sealed to stop that illegal trading activity here. Right. And the walls have been dedicated to the souls of our ancestors who passed through these dungeons as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. <laughs> and researchers have come up with different figures regarding the number of people who arrived alive, about 10, 15, 20, 30 to 100 million, etc. But none has been able to tell us about the number of people that died on the sea. The number of people that died in the castles like this, or on their way into the castles, and in the many battles that the raids to capture them. So you can imagine the number of people who were involved in a trade that lasted for over 400 years. And every year, every year on the 31st of July, the raids are laid here in their memory. Every year. Every year. 31st of, 31st of July. Reverential night. Reverential night. To remember that.
than the chiefs, the politicians, and um, people from the diaspora all visit us here. We hold a, a vigil on the Rensha night, and then reads are laid here in their memory. Inshallah, for their soul. Thank you. You're welcome. And this was placed there by the traditional authorities. Yeah. Yes. To serve as a reminder that never should we allow the kind of inhumanities in the dungeons to be perpetrated again, not only to black people, but all races of the world. And that's the message from this castle. <laughs> but now, on top of this, was a church. Uh -huh. So they pray f up, they kill they down. Prayed, uh, <laughs> <laughs> On top of that was a church. The official English church sponsored a group of missionaries here, called them Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. We had to teach boys how to read and write, take care of the spiritual welfare of the merchants and the traders. But because of the high death rates among Europeans, uh, which affected the missionaries, they decided to send boys from here to England to study. So they would come back and teach their own people. Initially, three boys were sent, but two of them also died in England. Only one survived and came back. And he worked there for about 50 years. When he died, he was buried just behind us here. Let's get closer to you. What's your work here? What did you show? Yeah, museum. Yeah, museum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Reverend Philip Kweku. He was born on a Wednesday, so he was called Kweku. But as happened to some of our names and institutions, these were anglicized. So Kweku became Kweku. Uh -huh. I told him Kweku. I told him my own name was Blankson. That's an anglicized African name. Comes from Kuntu, meaning blanket. Kuntu, blanket. So blanket's son became Blankson. But you don't need a blanket here. I don't need a blanket here. That's true. You don't need a blanket here. You don't need a blanket here. You don't need a blanket here. <laughs> His name is, is an arcane name. Yeah. It yes. has a meaning. Yeah. It's Kuntu cover. Is, is cover, something you use that to cover, cover yourself. Yes, yeah. Like uh, the English It's habit. hot here. It's yes. hot here. So you, need, you don't need a blanket. When the weather cow, is 21 it's, degrees, yeah, you I'll see people for wearing Wearing uh, sweaters, sweaters. Yeah, yeah. In, in, yeah. in Kekus. Yeah. Well, well, not only in Kekus, in Ghana. Kota Kente. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, change. They try to change the name. Yeah. So, yeah, different person. So, Philip Kweku was sent to England in around 1754, came back in 1766, and helped open a lot of schools along the coast. And also, through his influence, other missionaries set up high schools. So, by the time of his death to today, Cape Coast has been known as the Citadel of Education. True. Yes. He died in 1816. 
at the age of seven, at the age of seventy five. The first school was established in Kekus. Philip yeah. Kwaku boys. Boys. Oh. Yes. First Philip school. Kwaku named after him. Oh. Castle schools, then Philip Kwaku boys, and then other higher institutions. Yeah. Fantepim, yeah. Kofi Annan who attended school here. Most of the prominent people in Ghana you have heard you out there. Die. In Fantepim? No. I came for an excursion. An excursion. excursion uh, to Cape Coast. To Cape Coast. From Zabzugo Middle School. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> right, may we see that? <laughs> when there were only two six form schools in the whole of the, 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 the half of the physical half of Ghana, mm -hmm. there were ten six form schools in Cape Coast alone. Alone. Ten six form schools. Mm. That's the grave of Captain George MacLean. He was a Scottish. He died here in 1847. He was uh, responsible for the colonization of the Gold Coast. He realized when he came here, the slave trade was being abolished. So he realized that to make profits from the rest of the trade, he needed a cooperation from the local people. So he took his time to study their customs and culture and gained their trust so much that when they had problems, they came to him. And up there, in MacLean's hall, a hall that has been named after him. He sat in consultation with the chiefs and people and settled their disputes according to their own tradition. So one day he suggested to them, why don't we sign a peace agreement with the British so they protect us against some of our local rivals? They did. And that translated into what became known as the Bond of 1844. That ushered us into colonial administration. Mm. So he was a protectorate. So he was the architect of the colonial rule in the Gold Coast. This was his wife. She died barely three months after she arrived here, uh -huh. because the husband was seen to be having an extra affair with a black mistress in town. So the poor lady could not stand competition from the local women. <laughs> took over those of her medicine. Right that, that, that was a controversy that developed as well, that she, he probably killed her. Oh. Well, was it not a Muslim? No, McLean is a... That was a mistake. He should have been a Muslim. Is he a... <laughs> married four wives. Yes, he could have <laughs> legally done that. <laughs> and that's a soldier. We call him C.B. Whitehead. C.B. Whitehead also died here in 1812. But well, you don't know what killed him. But like most of his compatriots who came here died of certain tropical diseases, such as malaria. You see. And they believed that when they had malaria and they took alcohol, they would be cured. So a young soldier arrives here, got malaria, and quaffed about three bottles of brandy or schnapps or whiskey and died. Yes, alcohol poison. So apart from these three people, there are a lot of people buried here. Lots of soldiers, missionaries. The death rate was so high that West Africa was called White Man's Grave. The White Man's Grave. These are examples of some of the graves. Blip the way, they say. Was there ever any chance that slaves arrived here and escaped? Oh, there are instances of people escaping from here. Yes. Um, well, in, in the first place, as, as we look at the castle now, we yeah. may think that it was perfected yeah. before the slave trade began. Uh, but it took a period of about 300 years okay. to develop it while the slave trade was going on. You see? So there are lots of loopholes and activities that could get them out of here. Okay. Mm. Did they go to South America to or the, North America? To, to South America. To, 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 to Brazil? To Bra to... Most captives were taken to Brazil, controlled by the Dutch and the Portuguese. Mm. Right. But most other Af uh, da um, uh, English captives were sent to the Spanish colonies and the English colonies in America, meaning the South uh, Carolinas. And, uh, and, so the, and so most of the African Americans then were, take, were, were sent up from South America to the, to the north. north. So to they what? didn't come directly most No, of them. Mo there were instances of them, some going, but most of them went to the south before they were sent to the north. There were chains of distribution. We are 
are going to walk here and then go down. والسلام عليك وعلى آلك وأصحابك أجمعين الصلاة والسلام عليكم يا أنبياء الله اللهم ربنا رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت سيدنا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفيعة العالية وابعث اللهم يا رب وقام محمود الذي وعته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد وارزقنا شفاعته يوم القيامة alone here in the background. Uh, do you mind it? Can you take a couple of pictures of Molana alone with this background? So now we are walking on top of the tunnel uh -huh. that has been sealed in the male dungeon. There is what we are walking on now. And these guns were mounted on it to defend the castle against pirates and other nationals who tried to capture it. Because the trade here was very lucrative. And merchants who traded here had to pay a percentage of their profits. So there have been several battles here for the control of the castle between European powers. You see, this castle has a direct history with New York. Yes, New York was a Dutch colony captured by the English How in 1664. You this, this, yes, they, this, they left them here. Very heavy, huh? They're very heavy. It's heavy. Oh. Camera. Yeah. Very heavy. You want to try it? What's, what's, uh, did, they, did they fill them up with something? Because I see some of them have like... Some of them have holes that were filled with gunpowder. So that when they hit the target, they explode. Setting the target ablaze. May we go this way, please? Yeah. Now we're about to look into the tunnel from the male dungeon, the tunnel that is sealed in the male dungeon. A soldier stood here to supervise them as they moved along. Very deep. Mm -hmm. And all these were warehouses for incoming goods and the outgoing ones. The guns, gunpowders, and many things that were brought in here were kept there. Also gold, ivory, spices, and many things that were being shipped out along with the captives were kept there. Uh -huh. This was the end of the tunnel. The tunnel, yeah. this part is also sealed, and the space used as a warehouse. Mm. So when they came out through this door, which was very small, it allowed one person out at a time. So when they stepped out, they were chained. They waited in line, so they got a sizable group 
Then they were marched through that door. So that door became known as the door of no return. Because anyone who went through it was not expected to come back. Yes. We will go through it, but we will come back. We will come back. We will come back. Your Excellency, this was a cell for the female captives who resisted the sexual advances from the soldiers and the officials who were kept here. How many? About 20. We are now in the female dungeons. Okay. We are now in the women dungeons. These dungeons held between 500 and 800 women and children. Mm. So, yes. If a woman had a child here, you are just part of the. Yes, but the average age was between 13 and 30. So from 10 to 40, 45 were all taken. See, even old men with gray hair were shaven and they were polished with palm oil to make them look strong and healthy. See, that's why in books you see black people shining. Uh, in books they put oil to make them look strong. Uh -huh. Let's visit one of the dungeons here. Are we uh, males allowed? Males allowed, this time. <laughs> But so, why do you people remove the shackles from the walls? Shackles? Yes, we have to. We need to pr preserve them. Because if they were here, the uh, um, salty nature of the atmosphere will rust it. So we we'll put them somewhere. Otherwise, if you are not here, somebody can also move them off. You see? So this was one of the dungeons where they kept the women. And they lived there in the same conditions as the men. Probably worse than what we experienced in a male dungeon. See, but one significant thing here was this door that is sealed. Through it, the merchants, the officials, the soldiers came to select the women, they washed them, and then abused them. And after, brought them back. And those who were found to be pregnant in the castles were taken out. There were stone houses with hired mistresses who took care of them. You explained this to Obama? Yes, I did. Yes. But he said? It was sad. Most of the time he was quiet. Yeah. See, those who were sick, uh, those who were found to be pregnant on the ships were thrown into the sea. Because <laughs> no one bought a pregnant slave. Those who were sick and considered weak that they would not be able to make the journey were also thrown in. The dead followed up. So there were sharks following the ships that were feeding on them. See. And when there was a food shortage on board the ships, the sharks were then trapped to feed the captives on the ships. They would use them as bait? Yes. So the sharks that followed the ships feeding on the dropouts were later trapped. So if you came here with your wife or sister, you slept in different dungeons. In the night, a soldier came for your wife or your sister, raped her or your daughter. If she was found pregnant on a ship, she went into the sea. And the shark that eat her up was later trapped to feed you. These are some of the inhuman activities associated with the transatlantic slave trade. See, of course, slavery have existed in almost every human society. Step up, please. Fishing, yes, fishing harbor. So when they came out, they were loaded into canoes like this and taken into the ships. So this was done mainly in the night so that the residents would not see what was happening. No, they knew. They also anticipated escapes. So the whole harbor was walled up to the wharf. From the wharf to this castle was a restricted area called it European Beach. So, Yes. This served as the official entrance into the castle.
and in front of it, we may describe it as the arrival and departure lounge. Between the harbor and the ships, one of them might have decided not to go. So he will just jump into the ocean, pulling the rest with him, and they will all drown here. So either they wanted to escape or just to commit suicide. So you can imagine a morning after departure here, bodies floating with chains around them. From here, they were taken to the Americas, the Caribbeans, and the West Indies. Across the Atlantic, one captain who was given an evidence before a fact-finding commission was asked, how comfortable are the captives on board the ships? His reply was, they are as comfortable as you may feel in your coffin. And the ships were described as floating coffins. They were made to lie naked on planks or wood. Occasionally, they let them out and cane them to dance for exercise. Called a dancing by the whip. Those who survived were sold to plantation owners and the miners who used them on the farms and the mines. And of course, the proceeds went into building America and Europe. This is now a fishing harbor. And fishing is the backbone of the local economy. But now we have the door of return. We have the door of return. In, 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 in 1998, two bodies of ex-slaves were exhumed in America and Jamaica. They were brought back through this door to reverse the trend of no return so that the descendants of the survivors, like my brother, will come back. <laughs> Not necessarily through this door, but through Ghana as a gateway to West Africa. You're welcome. You're welcome. He married here also. Oh, okay, good luck. Huh? So I've really returned. You have really returned. <laughs> This was a cell for those who persistently tried to escape. Mm. Those who escaped and were rearrested, and those who were violent. They were kept here without food, water, air, or light. 
So they stayed here until they died. Yes, they stayed here until they died. And they were packed into bags. They brought men from the mill dungeon to pack them into bags and were thrown into the ocean. Yes, this was a condemned cell. If you are brought here, you have no life. That really was the door of no return. Room of no return. <laughs> Please, let's be mindful of the head as we go out. I think the, I think they have to take these politicians who are, or these, these politicians or these governments that they were uh, working in this uh, transatlantic trade to the Hague. Yes, 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 yes. Send them to the court. So now we will climb the steps and go to the museum and see some of the artifacts we have on display. Okay, and that's it. That's it. Um, do you have a good restaurant in town? Yes. Um, I'm coming. I'm, I'll, let me think of it. Think I'm good for. Where you are. Yeah. We are building a new cell. This, this, all these were warehouses. For the gold, many things that they carried with them, along with the, the slaves to the America. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this was the gate we took. It's just, allowed to take pictures? Yes, yes. That's the gate we took pictures from. We, we went to the door of no return. And those are the activities that were carried out there. So, and, uh, so these pictures were. Uh, these were drawings. Drawn before. Before, yes. At that time. That time, around that time, artists, let's say, merchants who arrived here just sat on their ships, and then draw acts of what's going on around them. So these were captured from the scenes from that period. It will be good if you stay back. Please don't cross no, me. Never mind, never mind. I know, it's no, but okay. it's okay. I, it, I know it's okay, but I want it to flow, not to cross. Shh, 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 shh. Flow with us, huh? Flow with us. Don't cross me, please. Uh -huh. These are early Stone Age technology used by the people to sharpen, to fish, to farm, to cut, uh, things like that. Uh -huh. For iron from Stone Age to iron, uh -huh. and there's a uh, terracotta figurines, uh -huh. images of important people that are molded in clay for posterity to remember the deeds of people that were done. These are terracotta figurines. An early trade and market is how people went fishing. They have small boats, in small numbers, and the fish took for the community. This depicts a market of local people. So they come here and they try to kidnap this. Uh, yes, this, this, this was the society before the Europeans arrived. Uh -huh. Going about doing a normal business of fishing, of selling, of trading and doing our normal business. And then Europeans arrived. But one of the things that attracted them was gold. 
gold. Yeah. Is to have alluvial mining. They dive, collect the materials, process them, and then sell them. This is what was trading between Africans and Arabs across the Mediterranean and the Sahara. And when Europeans got knowledge of the gold, they decided to come and take the gold trade away from the Arabs and then ended up with the slave trade. So these uh, elements of the gold activities used and the artistic nature tells us of the development of the trade. Hmm. This is uh, Henry the Navigator, the man who inspired European sailors to explore the west coast of Africa and came up with the Elmina Castle. Yeah. There's an image of the Elmina Castle, and that's an image of uh, the Elmina Castle in the ocean. Elmina. Elmina. That's the first. Al Elmina. Elmina. Elmina in Arabic. Uh, it, means, it means the uh, beach. The beach yeah. or harbor. Yeah, the harbor. Yes. And uh, in, in, in Portuguese, it means the mine, mm. the mine. Mm -hmm. This is uh, George MacLean, uh -huh. the George MacLean, the man buried here who made the, who made the bond, yes, the treaty. Uh -huh. These are some of the trade goods that came with the Europeans. Most of them were alcohol <laughs> you see? and tobacco, many glass, European trade wares. Etc. But principally, they were using guns and knives. These were used in the exchange for the slaves. Oh, yeah. For the slaves. And these are the forts and castles, the number of forts and castles along the coast of Ghana alone. See, forts and castles along the coast of Ghana alone. This is a Cape Coast castle. And this is also the Cape Coast Castle, how it began. Small forts and then expanded. Uh -huh. This expanded form. So we have the slaves, or the captives, as they walked in from the interior after they have been captured in their communities. And some of them were blacksmiths, some of them were goldsmiths, some of them were community leaders. Linguists, traditional leaders who were captured in wars and brought down to the coast. An exchange sold for guns and gun powders, alcohol, tobacco, and many of certain. These are some of the branding the shackles, chains that were used on them when they arrived, particularly in the castles. This was a branding rod. See, this was put in fire to make red. Then they smear the upper right arm here with palm oil or the breast. And then they put it. So they have JSS, John Smith's slave, printed there. And then taken to the dungeons to wait for the ships. So, and this is uh, the trade. This is how it's going on. This gentleman is being examined by this doctor. And this is the boss. He sits down with his loyal black servant. You see? Some of the traitors are doing the marketing. And this man is doing the whipping. Others are also waiting to be sold. Okay. And over here, we have a map of showing the distribution of the slaves. Most of them were taken. So the pinker, the color, the more the color deepens than the intensity of it. So as the demand in the Americas and the Caribbeans went higher, then the further it went into the interior. See? So initially it was remaining along the coast, but then it went further inland. And you can see captives were taken from all these parts even as far back as Mozambique and taken to the Americas, the Caribbeans, and the West Indies. And then sugar, coffee, cotton, tobacco were taken from the plantations to, America, to Europe. This went into the process in the, and then came to Africa in cheap jewelry gin and weapons. That's why the economy of Africa is dependent on imported goods. We're going this way. Mm -hmm. 
So you are welcome on board the slave ship. Ah. Uh -huh. This was the condition in which they traveled. So the condition in which they traveled. There is something I have observed on this man's neck. It's a chain yes. that we saw the out there. The fetter, uh -huh. you put it. Yes. Like a leash. Uh -huh. Like a leash. Dogs, a leash. Yeah. So you see, this man is here inside a ship checking how many of them are dead, how many of them are sick, how many do you have to throw away. So that's what they do. They come through trap doors like this, which is here. You see? So when they leave, everything is like that. The men were on the shelf and the women were up here, as seen here. So these are the men and these are the women. And you can see the proportion or ratio of three to one. So that's three men to, three men to one man. Uh, three men to one woman. Yes, that was a, a ratio, right? So this is technically how they were arranged and taken away.